Mm-hmm. Uh, si ano, um, Mon, I believe, must prefer mo ang ano. Tell me, what is, what is your preference? Ako din, I'm also handling a single client right now. Tapos mas preference ko talaga yung, ano, yung lesser clients kasi I'm able to get most of my time just for myself long. Nice. Mm-hmm. Also, okay. like what Miss Melissa said, quality of work then. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, um, ano na to? Mon, you mentioned here that you're you're kind of lagging behind. Okay, lang ha. Now, you guys, especially the the three of you, um, I'll be extracting your points of view. So, regardless of what the other panelists says, uh, just express your opinion. Okay. Sure. Wag tayo magano. Wag tayo magatrasan because this is the this is the room where we get to tell our opinion, just straight on. Wala nang ano, walang sugar coating for the sake of our audiences. All right, so are we ready? Yeah, um, yeah, I think so. Kasi wala si ano eh, wala si Noe and wala si Anne and we are running late. So let's go. Hello, everybody. Today is that day of the week where we gather a bunch of people to talk about the ins, the outs, the ups and downs, the good, the bad, and the beautiful people here of freelancing. Buti naman nakahabol si Noe or else pagagalita ko. Pagsosolohin kita sana next week eh kung ganyan eh. But yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, today, ano, para binagyo ata si, ano, si, si Anna. So... Hindi siya ano, hindi siya makakasali kayo, but who knows kung makakasali siya and just stay in the background or maybe just in the audiences. Who knows? Ewan ko kung nasaan man siya. I hope you guys from where, saan ba nag-hit ang typhoon? Is it in Bicol? Bicol, Sorsogon, those areas. Uh, I hope that you are all doing well and you are safe. Uh, meanwhile, si Noe, why are you late? Oh, yes. I just woke up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your excuse. Yeah, that's understandable. Ang ginagawa ko rin dyan kay Anna eh. Kaya yeah. ano, it's, it's okay. So, resbakan na lang ano. <laughs> But yeah, today we got two hosts. Uh, nandito ako, I am Phoenix, and I am with my co-host, Noe. Na late siya, but he will be doing a lot of work. Meanwhile, kayo, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you will be um, putting on the comment section down below where you are viewing from and what's your opinion on our topic for today, which is no way. Wait, ayun. Uh, the pros and cons <laughs> of handling multiple clients, part two. <laughs> There you go. Since na na sabi kasi natin na ano yung th- when this was discussed last week, we said hindi the uh, kulang ito kung tutuosin. And since hindi siya masyado formatted last week, we just randomly talked about anything. And but uh, now we would like to tackle this because we got our awesome awesome panelists this week. And let's start from the rose of all the thorns, Miss Melissa. Say hi to everybody, please. Hi everyone who's watching right now. Um, even though bagyo, kasi dito rin super dilim na rin sa Cavite, as in parang magsi-7 o'clock na. So, just want to say hi. Excited right. na. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for coming back, Melissa. Yeah. I know that you're back. Buti naman. It's, it's been a while, right? Lahat ata kayo. Ay, kayong dalawa eh. It's been, it has been a while. I haven't uh, spoken to you for well, I, quite I just a gave, long time. I just gave birth. That's why. Oh. Yeah, about three months ago. Wow! So Congratulations. <laughs> Yay! We got a freelancer so baby changes, now. Hair. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. 
I love that. I love that. Buti naman, ano, buti naman you're staying strong and you're still going on. And I'm really, really glad that we have you today. And what about you, Alan? It's been a while din. So the, I think the yeah. audiences miss you. Could you please say hi to them? I miss them more. Huh? Pang showbiz talaga. Huh? <laughs> yeah, hi. Hi, I'm, I'm Alan. And it's nice to be back as well with you, Phoenix. No way. Nice to see you live, no, no way, for the first time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to be here. And thanks for the invite. Glad to have you with us. When I, when I heard that you will be here, uh, parang na excited. Pati itong ano itong susunod na na panelist natin. Our third panelist got excited once it was announced na pupunta rito magiging kasama natin si Melissa at si Alan ngayon. Say something, Mon. Welcome back. Hi guys. So I'm the most previous uh just success na no? So I'm glad to be back. So thank you for having me here. Well, I'm glad that you said yes. Kasi parang naging bagong style ni Ana na yung ganyan eh. Yung aantayin ka sa, ano, sa Just Success tapos on the spot natatanong, natatanungin niya kung pwede kang mag, ano, mag-guest so, so that hindi ka makakatanggi. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I am glad that you're here with us because I really, really love your point of view when, you, when I was interviewing you. It was so good. It was a great story to tell everybody. Okay, so we got different people here. Now, we... Uh, Speaking of different people, how about Noe? Could you read our audiences? Kung sino sino ang mga ano natin reader uh, viewers natin ngayon? Yes, yes. First of all, no, na nanawagan ako kung sino nakakita kang Miss kay Miss Anna. Please uh, let her know na live na tayo. <laughs> Joke lang. Joke lang. So hello, hello sa lahat ng nanonood. Uh, just a quick favor before I start greeting people here. Uh, pwede nyo bang i-share itong live video na ito sa inyong mga feed so that more people will benefit from our conversations, uh, especially ngayon na meron tayong powerhouse na guests. So it will be really fun to talk about later. So hello kay Den, um, kay Maureen, uh, Joanne from Marilao, Bulacan, Princess, Mary Jane, Erica, Kay Alex, hello, watching from the office as usual. Um, kay Mitch, Josie from Compostela, Cebu. Hello sa mga Bisaya dyan. I'm from Cagayan de Oro. Uh, kay Sir Francisco, hello, hello. Kay Jomar, kay JV from QC, kay Marian. Na bumabagyo pero laban pa rin to watch FCC. So really, really happy to know na safe kayo and watching the FCC. Um, kay Kathleen, kay Irish, kay Mahar, hello from Laguna, and kay Maria Luz. So, hello sa inyong lahat and I hope na mag-contribute kayo mamaya sa comment section uh, about the pros and cons of handling multiple clients. And I will be tasked to take a look at your comments and then ask our guests. Ayun. Hello pala, may humabol pa si Yumi from Cavite. And si Enzo Dupa, isang Lodi din. Hello, sir. Ayan. Okay. Good job, Noe. Thank you very much for for watching everybody. Ito ang mga ano. Since we got Alan and Melissa and, and Mon here, feel free to ask as many questions as you can. Ipa, ipapasa natin sa kanila because I know that you will be taking advantage of this. And at the same time, pagdating ng Christmas party, nandyan din si Melissa and Alan and Mon. And you can continue to ask them questions pero syempre it kind of ruins the it kind of ruins the moment if you're there, you know, badgering them with, <laughs> with freelancing questions. So might as well ask it here habang nandito pa sila. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's start with pros and cons of hand handling multiple clients. Now, a while ago, I asked you, Melissa, what your preference is. Could you tell the audiences your point of view about multiple clients? Um, a little bit of background. Uh, before, kasi I was addicted to getting clients. So I used to have like 15. Actually, I'm about 20. But yeah, 15 na lang, ibrahat natin. And um, mm -hmm. one of the main cons is that the performance is not han because at that time I wasn't really niching down. Although I had uh, about seven people on the same niche, pero may iba-iba pa rin na industry na hinahandle. So hindi talaga siya 
at a niche down pa. So the con there is that, yun nga, performance is number one. Second, super exhausted. And mm. you don't have any social life anymore because I was working about uh, <laughs> 16 hours na uh, on a daily basis for six days. So imagine that, no love life, no social life. So talagang, masaya yeah. ako na I had a lot of pay, but wala eh. <laughs> hindi hindi na siya hindi na siya maganda sa overall wellness ng ng aking buhay so um so that's, that's the two points for me so um right now I've shifted to a maximum of of a, uh, catering to about third three na lang na maximum of clients um so two to three ang kaya ko lang itangga for for one whole month so depending on if the contract is just for six months Di na maghahanap na ako ng kapalit niya. Pero um, right now talaga, maximum ko is three. Why is that? Um, it's because, by the way, yung yung sa three na yon hindi lang siya basta, basta client lang. So niche down din siya. So kung ano yung ginagawa ko for hmm. client, one and two, same hmm. din kay client, three. And pare-pares din na industry yon as much as possible. Hmm. So the angle is 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 the same. So yung mind ko and yung focus ko is uh, one path lang. Hindi siya yung paiba-iba. So... Hmm. Yun nga. Kaya ganun, kasi nga yung quality of work, I want to maintain that. And at the same time, when I review stuff, of course, parang ano yan, parang kang ka-torny pag nasa consulting and services ka na. So minsan nagre-review ka ng mga bagay-bagay. So when I do that, isahan na lang. Hindi na yung madami pa akong tinitingnan na resources. Kasi yung, yung kinikator ko na clients, eh, same lang naman yung industry and ginagawa ko sa kanila. So ganun. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is so. That is so nice. I, I, that is so nice. But I'm not, ano ko lang, because your numbers are pretty high in comparison to to many other freelancers out there. But pero ano eh, Do we really end up that way? Do we usually grab as many clients and as many contracts as we can at the start? The habit um, Are we prone to that? Yeah, most especially if uh, I don't know, because I always also did some work in Upwork. Eh. So kapag sa, mm-hmm. nag-upwork ka, naggawa ka ng marketplace and all, uh, tumataas yung ratings mo, right? So tendency yeah. is a lot of clients will see you. So syempre, ikaw naman, pag nakikita nila, nakakaramdam na ka, receive ka na lang ng random offers coming here and there, as matataas yung bid nila sa'yo, syempre ma-entice ka kasi parang, uy, sayang, na-miss ko yung ano na to. Baka ma-miss ko tong amount na to. Ito rin yung madadagdag sa akin. So ayun, talagang meron talagang tendency na na kuhanin mo as much as you can before you expand. Pero yun nga, meron din kasing point na okay na nag- na kumuha ka ng madaming clients kung meron ka ng team with you. Pero kung mm-hmm. mag-isa ka lang, um, merong transition point yan na kailangan mo pa rin maglaglag ng clients. So, ikwento ko na lang din. Before I um, built my team, so ang, di ba, nasa 15 to 29 class, mag-isa pa lang ako noon na <laughs> Nagkira ko ng transition point. <laughs> yung transition point, yun na nag-decide na ako kumuha ng um, graphic designer tsaka ng assistant, assistant admin, ganyan. Pero, ang nangyari doon is, uh, ang turn out ay nung kinahandle ko pa lahat, ang hirap pala pag sabay-sabay ng transition and then i-maintain ko yung number of clients na ganun. Kasi kailangan ko pang magbigay ng oras to uh, train the, the, the new people that, that I hired. So, nagkaroon ako ng, sabi ko na, since gusto ko naman magbago ng path, uh, gusto ko magkaroon ng maraming time, and so I really have to duplicate myself and start delegating. So, kailangan po maglagdag ng client. So, ayun na. Mm. So, hanggang nagbawas na ako, nagkaroon na ako ng sampu na lang. So, sabi ko, hindi pa enough, kailangan ko pa na mag-train. So, hanggang sa kumunti siya, umabot na lang ng seven. Tapos, kumuha ako ng, nag-train ako ng team member. Tapos, kumuha na lang ako ulit. Kasi meron na akong um, mga tao sa team ko. Pero, syempre, nagkaroon din ako ng turning point na eh, ano pala, meron na akong ibang gustong project na gawin. So, maglalaglag na ako ng tao, maglalaglag din ako ng client. So, doon naman yung nagkaroon na ako ng SMA. Mm. So, nagkaroon ng phase. Iba-iba. Doesn't it hurt? Doesn't it hurt na ano, na kailangan mong mag, you know, kailangan mong maglaglag as what you said. Doesn't that kind of hurt um, your feelings na sayang? Meron, konti, pero kasi ang, ang iniisip ko is, pag, pag nag-stay ako doon sa ganong route, sa ganong path, bakit hindi ako makaalis? 
So baka hindi ako lalo mag-grow. So I really had to decide na kailangan ko talagang ikat to. Tapos magbag, ano na ako ng budget muna. To give time for myself para makabuo ko ng iba kong product and all. And mas start ko yung ibang project ko. Ngayon siya. So ano lang, tawag dito, um, tiis muna ng kahit siguro one to three months. Ganun. Makakabalik ka naman. Kasi alam mo na yung dapat gawin. That is kung alam mo na yung dapat gawin. Mm. <laughs> and that's a, that's another long discussion eh kapag kapag yeah. ano na, how do you make yourself alam kung anong dapat gawin right it's yes. oh this, this is the good thing about freelancing eh kasi it, 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 bit by bit hindi mo alam you really are actually learning something well regardless of whether you refuse to to learn skills or what not your experience is in fact teaching you bit by bit eto sinabi ng ni Melissa experience has already has taught her a lot and it's a good thing that she was able to adjust very very quickly and she was able to decide for her own good and this is something that I think many of you freelancers need to learn because it's not just about building up your skills you really have to take you really have to listen to yourself and see what kind of a freelancer you are it's not just about working well for your client it's also about dealing with life's um, situation the situation at hand that's given to you by this uh, freelancing as we call it what about you Alan let's try to look at this from a client's point of view. Do you see your contractors overwhelmed or overworked or accepting too many contracts? Is it possible for you to see that or feel that? I guess that's, uh, I, I approach this from a different point of view, no, Phoenix. And mm. I think I, I've been listening to Melissa nga and I, I really find her insights very useful because like, I do have like, people on my team, but as I'm also starting to expand to get clients a month. So I'm on the other side where I started with like mm. my own products and I'm exploring consultation and client work because I was encouraged by a good friend telling me that, like I say, I'm into email marketing and he was telling me mm. that and yeah, you market dito is as mature as in say in the Western world that there is a lot of potential uh, for me. So I'm trying to expand that part of my business. And Siguru, with regard to the, I, I have some Siguru, more starting off back with the client work. I actually started off as a freelancer, no pa ng oldest pa, before pa mag upward. Mm. <laughs> so that's the first mm -hmm. experience ko with earning online. So Siguru, I guess just jumping off yung question mo, Siguru, with Melissa about multiple clients and, and how to handle them. Siguro for me, um, I only have like, for now I have a consulting client for email marketing and funnels. And siguro ang napansin ko, on, on top of that client, kasi I do smaller projects just to test out different niches. And I, I really agree with what Melissa said about yung finding one niche. Kasi um, you do a lot of research per, per client, di ba? And it, it doesn't make sense to do start from scratch every time. So mm. it's important to have that because there are universal facts, universal desires in mga tao. Eh. Like for example, with when you're targeting kwaer mga mga conservatives, American mga sixty and over about financial products, or I mean about physical products, about health insights mm -hmm. like yung mga taong mga senior, they don't necessarily want to live longer. They want to feel young again. So yung mga ganang mm. insight, it's mm. something that you you discover by going deep in one niche, diba? It's not superficial knowledge. Eh. And if if I think my perspective with my limited experience in my life client work, I think that is something that I will move forward to na it's some, na if I go into one niche, I want to go die, the um, dive deep into one and get that kind of insider knowledge. Because a lot of the things with, that we do as email marketers, then after you find some success, yung mga copy na sinusulat namin can be templatized and you can reuse mm -hmm. that in different niches. And if you have like that understanding of that person, parang mobilis na siya. Like you can scale to more clients if if. It's in the, within the same niche because a lot of it will be but copy-paste in the thing or the system is already there. And 
I heard this one great insight yesterday about sa atomic ha- habits ni James Clear where he said yung goals ng ng winners and losers his term <laughs> pareho lang naman eh pareho ang goals ng mga nagsasucceed and those nang hindi pero ang nagkakaiba sa kanila is the systems that you create for yourself so he says that we don't rise to the level of our goals but fall to the to the like fall to the strength of our systems. May ganun siyang sinabi. And that really that really made sense to me no na sometimes when I feel overwhelmed like I manage my own business and do some fine work. That napapansin ko nga na if I don't put everything in systems na may schedule ka na I alam mo flow mo sa Trello for example, it can get overwhelming. So um siguro for me if in terms of but whether you have one or multiple if i will get multiple it would probably going to be in a specific niche basically i look at it from the market sino ba yung kakausapin mm-hmm. ng client kasi whether y- yun yung research if i can reuse that research and reuse my templates for that i th- i think i can handle more clients easily than kaysa two clients so totally different and i start from the ground up for both of them, kahit two pa lang, baka hirap na ako. But if I can scale na same market, I think that would help. Wow! Imagine that, ladies and gentlemen. That is coming from Mr. Alan, ha? Mr. Alan Go, ha? Sabi niya, pag, yun na, pag, if it is too far from each other, para dalawa pa lang medyo mahirap na. And that, I think that is something that was, uh, that is new to me. Uh, it's a new information to to everybody. Itong, if you wanted to uh, accept multiple multiple clients, might as well put them all in one niche, which I heard from Melissa herself and from you, Alan, as well. So this is something that you you guys need to think about because finding your niche is already a challenge. Now, when it comes to finding multiple clients, na, uh, come to think of it, mahirap nga talaga kapag um, gusto nitong isa addition, gusto nitong isa multiplication. Parang ang hirap, magulo, magiging magulo ang buhay. Whereas your life would, would be better, would be simpler, it would be easier to think kung parehong addition ang, ang mga clients mo. So with that in mind, I think it is good. It is good for you guys to learn to choose your clients. It is not relying on whatever is available out there. Kung ano, hindi yung porket available itong itong article writing ko kundi mo na kahit na nakafocus ka na sa ano sa sa transcribing or email marketing. But kaiba yun eh. So it is best that you focus on one thing and just be strong on it para ka, yung mga darating na clients mo rin, hindi rin distracting. Kasi pag minsan meron talaga yung ganyan na nakakatanggap ka ng mga offers na taliwas sa mga ano, sa specialty mo, right? If you have experienced that. Now, it's best that you filter your your uh, your potential clients. This is a good practice because even Melissa and Alan, they screen off those clients. Hindi na sila itong basta sumusunggab na lang kung ano ang available dyan. That is the mark of a successful freelancer. Just look at yes. both Melissa and Alan. And let's go to Mon. With you, Mon, listening to what Melissa, our experts here said, you're already one of them, but uh, hearing Melissa and Alan's point of view, what can you say about gathering multiple clients in your field? In my field, it's also kind of the same. Mm-hmm. Parang, it's really like one of the most important things that you focus first on like what the clients actually need so like what uh, mr allen was saying it's really important that first we have to do like this market research because uh, if we find out like we talk to them we find out like what they want for example um this was this was something that happened to like one of my mentors so he was he had a problem with his ano, with his like plumbing stuff so he called up a plumber and then like parang just got curious about it and tinanong niya yung plumber so like how do you get clients Tapos, like, mm. the plumber would say na, 
he goes out to this mga mga companies na parang parang upwork but for plumbers so mm-hmm. basically he would sign up for that tapos like he print out his profile and stuff tapos like yung yung company na yan it's they're the ones who's gonna like send out and contract them to like other to other customers pero yung problem dun is like yung type of work na mga binibigay sa mga plumbers it's not literally the thing that they wanted to do or like there are varying uh, levels of difficulty tapos minsan yung iba uh, sandali lang ba could you speak a little closer to the microphone how's this there you go okay, okay. so where was i uh yeah varying level varying levels of difficulty and yung ibang mga task niyan like sobrang hirap pero sobrang cheap din yung bayad sa kanila so like he was the plumber was complaining to my mentor tapos the mentor asked him well what kind of clients or what kind of work do you actually want to do tapos sinabi niya na sinabi ng plumber na uh, he wants to do something with yung parang ma central na heaters yung parang mm. basta may something na mga nagko-control ng temperature ng tubig doon so it's something that's an easy fix but but it's something na parang sobrang mahal na na i-charge nila sa mga clients ng mga plumbers so this mentor of mine happens to actually know digital marketing so he just pitched to the plumber na what if i since i i know how to use digital marketing so what if i use that to get you those type of clients tapos the plumber like was very excited that was like he kind of he did want to work with my mentor tapos i know they decided to work together and basically he got them results tapos when he got them results since my testimonial now or case study he showed it to other plumbers that hey i can th- get these types of um of clients for plumbers and other plumbers were like huh serioso ka paano and it just really sticks out kasi it's the type of like sobrang sobrang niche down tapos you're really really into it na you know a lot about the market and what they want and it's easy for them and it's easy for you to know which kind of which kinds of uh people to target and what kind of results to give it to so not only do you know how to um give them results which is also basically like what Alan, Mr. Allen said na parang copy paste na lang. So, yeah, you just copy paste the results and and in that way it's a lot easier for you to have um multiple clients because like parang minimal na talaga yung work mo. Hmm. But there's also the other side of things where like there are some other people who are handling like different types of like non non project based non okay mon uh, there's something hap- happening with your microphone we cannot hear you speak up hello speak clear there hello? you go okay. hello sorry for interrupting wala na kami kaming marinig kasi eh. yeah wala na where did i lose you guys the son, son of a, you were uh you were about uh, you were talking about some some jobs that aren't uh project based yeah yung mga okay. hourly so yeah. a lot of those hourly based na mga jobs or mga clients they have like a lot of things that are being thrown to like this one person 
Wala, no. Wala. Mm-hmm. So, so, basically, you kind of have less time to, like, handle more projects and more other client works. So, I really strongly suggest that if you really want to have, want to transition to having multiple clients, you, like, really need to, um, like, target who you, who is, who are the type of people that you want to work for and what kind of results you want to give them. And that way it's streamlined and way easy and it's way easier for you to like tackle more multiple clients, something like that. Yeah, I, I, yan ang ano eh, yan ang parang malaking challenge sa mga newbies. Kasi newbies, ano, basta may work, okay na ako. Yun, yun ang usually na ano na mantra nila. Eh. Basta may work, okay lang, okay lang. And then, parang ano, parang it takes time before they see, um, before they realize that you, they need to filter the clients, they need to, um, you know, select the skills. You really, uh, uh, parang, they need to to take more notice of the job na kukunin nila hindi lang hindi porket available lang diyan eh eh basta kukunin lang nila it takes a bit of time and no matter how much we tell the the newbies wala eh Impor- im- importante sa kanila yung magkaroon lang ng client eh so it is kind of yeah. hard to it is kind of hard to express this to to the newbies but uh, dear uh, newbies freelancers as much as possible, try to learn from it. Because if you do not start good right away, baka ano, baka you will end up learning things the hard way. And this is the reason why we are telling you our experiences because we've been through it. If not, then we have seen it. Yun ang, yes. And we, we really do not want you guys to, to suffer from that. Mm-hmm. Now, no way, oh, why yes. don't you... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to. I wanted to add something to what all of them said, you know, about mm-hmm. niching down, because over the weekend I just recently got home from <clears throat> from a Christmas party out of town, uh, with my barcada, and in there, uh, while while we were partying, I was reading this one book, so I had that to check. I had to check that off my my list. And uh, what I got from it was, um, in order for you to succeed and to be rich, because it was about a book about being rich, in order for you to be rich, you have to master the one thing that you are um, capable of doing. So if you, mm. because because uh, what happens when you try to get into business and then you choose a business that is totally different from what you did for the past five years, 10 years, 20 years of your life, then the learning curve will totally slow down the progress. Instead of, you know, hammering down on what you are uh, very, very knowledgeable of, then you find something like um, what what was cited in the book was that she wanted to... uh, establish a restaurant business and when when the author asked her why uh, she said na gusto niya lang daw yung restaurant kasi mahilig siyang kumain mahilig siya sa mga places na um, yung mga formal places and mahilig siyang magdine with with his with her friends and stuff like that and then when 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 the author asked uh, what did you do for the past 20 years she said i was an accountant uh, I don't like the numbers anymore. I don't want to work eight to five anymore and stuff like that. And then the author suggested to her to do an accounting business instead. And then right after she grows an accounting business, uh, then she can create a business na she likes, which is the, the restaurant. Because the, the success um, of the restaurant business or the business that she's trying to go into will fully depend on the knowledge that she has and the exp- expertise kumbaga so it's really um it kind of supports everything na sinabi nila about niching down and hammering down on that one 
particular market to to be successful on because ayun nga um w- once you know what you are doing and once you have experience of it then all you all you have to uh, to to parang improve on will be about the marketing marketing of the service and everything else because you know already the processes of doing it so ayun I, I have I have something uh, to add to what Noe said. Sorry to yes, uh, interrupt yes. you, but I'm, like I'm really passionate about this thing, you know. <laughs> yes. Because yes. Um, the the common problem that freelancers are facing right now is that the reason why they're accepting kahit anong job is because yun ang nag nagbuput ng food sa table. Right? And and um, if you don't have enough resources para mag-venture out or mag-aral ka ng this and that, you don't have any choice. Okay? So, it's okay if you're doing uh, things that you're that is not something that you really love at the moment. But I'm gonna tell you something, okay? So, when you're at that point, there are two, two kinds of goals that you need to set, most especially 2020 na dapat meron ka na nito. You have to have a skill goal and an income goal. Um, let me start with a skill goal. Uh, for example, for example, you're right now, you are you are a trans- transcriptionist, okay? And you know that you have a knack for marketing and you love this uh, the, the posts of other FFP strategies right out there, mga social media marketers, and you wanna be like that. Okay, so that's given. But wala kang resources. The main income that brings food to the table is yung ginagawa mo right now, which is yung pagiging transcription. Pag umalis ka doon, paano ang funds mo sa house? Will, tanong mo self mo, um, will it be sacrificed? Patamaan ba yung, pag, yung budgeting mo or what? So if that's the case, meron kang ia-adjust sa buhay mo at this point. So what are the, the what does your day look like? Meron ka bang extra to watch Netflix, do you have extra time to do um, parang things that doesn't really make sense for your life or doesn't really add value to your life? If that's the case, you just remove that and then use that time to upskill and to learn a new skill that you want to have or to yeah, you want to use for client services in the long run. So for example, tatanungan mo yourself, well, you're going to do this um, okay, mag-aaral ako. Okay, transcription siya ko na. Gusto ko maging FB's ad strategy. So within three months, for one hour a day, I have to review and do this and that. So gawin mo siya for that straight three months. Magpaka-mastery ka yung sinabi ni Noe. And then, uh, for example, yun na, meron ka, ng, meron ka ng skill goal. Meron ka rin dapat income goal. Kasi ang um, transition to a different niche, most especially if you're adept to having lots of clients, kasi nasanay ng lifestyle mo for sure, Pero nasanay din na wala kang social life, wala kang ibang klaseng life, kailangan mong mag-sacrifice ulit. And you have to ask yourself, do you want to stay in the same boat uh, for the next five years? Because if you're not going to do anything different today, chances are in the next one year or five years, you're going to have the same exact thing for sure. If you're not going to change anything uh, in your existing routine. So, for example, magkakaroon ka ng um, transition. I would recommend you to have an extra fund of at least 100,000 pesos uh, for the transition packet because you have to have leeway pa in getting clients. You're still going to get the hang of paano ba ipipresent to kay client and this and that. And you're going to find support, this and that. Okay? So, for example, your your goal is by Jan, uh, June 2020, uh, sorry, June to 2020, Ang kailangan FB marketing strategies na ako, hindi na ako transcriptionist, kunwari. Okay, dapat meron kang ano, backup plan. So, kailangan at this point, until uh, March, nag-aaral ka na, and until um, May, nag-iipon ka na. Para pag pumata ka ang June, pwede ka na mag-transition. Then, you can do your, the other uh, side stuff that you want to do. Pwede ka na magawa ng passion project mo, uh, pwede mo na gawin yung Ako alam yung gusto mong gawin. Because right now, um, you have to really decide and you have to assess yourself, what status am I in? Uh, do I need a job, a career, or a calling? That's the ultimate question that you have to ask yourself before you go around doing this and that. Eh. Because if, for example, you need a job pala muna for the next six months, magtiis ka muna. But meron ka dapat skill and income goal. May tanning. You're not gonna do that 
for the rest of the five years, hindi ganun. If you are aiming for growth, so dapat may timing, okay? Um, and, saka, for example, yun nga, gusto mo naman pala, meron ka pala extra funds. Pwede ka na pala mag ng career mo. Pwede go. Uh, meron ka na pala, kumari, pag-calling kasi, ano eh, it's, it's okay if you don't get that much money. But, you know, it's roaring for you at some point. So, depende sa'yo. Anong status, anong status ka, anong kailangan mo? Career, a job, or a calling? So, yun. And then, you have your skill goal and your income goal. Yan. Sorry, dal-dal ko. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Round of applause to Melissa. This is the, yeah, this is the Melissa that I miss. It, ito yung ano eh. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you were listening and listening intently or even taking notes. And if you were not, you can just simply replay this later on. Because what Melissa just gave you guys is expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive. Hindi... <laughs> Pag ako siguro ipagdadamot ko pa yung information na yan until you will beg me to tell you that. And very ni- how very nice of you, Melissa, for explaining it thoroughly like that. Kasi kung ako siguro baka masungit pa akong nags- nagsabi niyan. But I love it. I love it. I love it. So ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That is the point of view fr- from Melissa. And the, uh, she gave you some numbers. She gave you some numbers which is um, probably sabi mo na, okay, 100,000 pesos. Really? Kaya ko ba yan? That is the thinking if you are at the start. Kasi mukhang unachieve, medyo mahirap i-achieve yung 100,000 pesos. But believe me, ladies and gentlemen, Melissa has done the numbers. Melissa has done this, whatever she is giving, whatever advice she is giving you, she has done it herself. So, dapat, uh, uh, and she has done the numbers. So, it should be easy when the time comes. Now, Maraming nags- parang tema sa atin itong ano eh itong we want you we encourage you to take your time and learn things first before you venture into getting multiple clients. So let me ask you quickly panelists um game na tayo is it a yes or no? 3 months na itong freelancer 3 months na meron na siyang client, meron na siyang experience within 3 months as a general VA. Is it a yes or no kung tatanggap na siya ng, ano, ng second client? Melissa? Uh, Naka-reach down na ba siya or not yet? No pa. Not yet. General pa lang. General oh, pa lang. Okay. Yeah. Second client only. That's fine. Yeah. yeah there That's you go. That's like... Yeah, there you go. Ayun, ma- maraming conditions eh. Kasi it's not a simple, it's not a simple yes or no. Din. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. From Melissa, yes, as long as you as you can support it with your own internet. What about you, Alan? Is it a yes or no? Yeah, I think sa akin man, it's yung nabagit ko niya about the systems. I mean, if, if you can have your workflow tight, mm-hmm. I mean, I think I, I'd i encourage them to get a second client. At the, at the very least, just to see if the workload, ikong kaya nila mapush yung sarili nila to do that. Kasi you'll never know. Eh. Kasi you might be overthinking din naman kung kailan ako kukuha ng second client. Mm, so yes. it's a good way then to challenge yourself. Kasi parang if we don't get that push, diba? parang we might overthink, we might stay. Hindi pa, kailan, kailan mo malaman kung handa ka na. So that's one of the ways to find out. I love that. Kasi yan talaga ang sakit ng sakit ng karamihan ng mga newbies eh. Yung overthinking. It's it's overprocessing. And, and especially when it comes to numbers. So kailan kailan na? Kailan ba ako pwedeng mag it's, it, And we, it's kind of frustrating whenever we say oh, it's up to you. Whatever we say that. So let uh, uh, let us be clear ladies and gentlemen that that the two Melissa and Alan say uh, they encourage you na to just venture into it and test the waters tignan mo kung uh, okay sa o hindi. What about you Mon? Is it a yes or no? 3 months down the line of general VA pwede ka na bang mag ano, mag secondary client? Well, 3 months down the line as a general VA that in itself can be also your niche because mm-hmm. you've already shown uh, my results kind of for this other client and the only thing na uh, hindering you is if you have time and if you are physically capable of handling one more client then if you can then go why the hell not 
I love that. Yeah, the, see? There you go. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, hindi namin sinasabi na wag kayong mag-multiple clients. Hindi namin sinasabi yan. We are encouraging you to go go forth and you know, so try it and push yourself. Kung instead na instead na nag-aalanganin kayo, just go ahead and take that that leap of faith and learn things by yourself. And it's there's no harm if in case na uh, if you happen to get a, a secondary client and you fail due to you know some circumstances, it's overwhelming, it's just too hard, the schedule is not good, yung mga ganang, that is just part of learning and it's gonna be okay. All you need to do is reboot and analyze and improve, learn from it and go again. Bakit hindi? If you really desire to have multiple clients, then go for it. Uh, okay, so I've... Yeah, go ahead, Alan. Kasi parang just about like having multiple clients, a single client, it should also be aligned with your goals. Like if kumikita ka ng enough sa isang client, then getting another one would sacrifice your time with the family and everyone. So it's not worth it, di ba? Kung gagawin mo yun. So kumbaga, we're not arbitrarily encouraging you to get a second client kasi people will, will look at you as more important, mas busy, mas mayaman. It has to be, it has to come from, from your own motivation and need. So, kung kumikita ka enough for one client and getting another one would like affect your family life, personal life um, so much that diba, it sucks the joy out of living, then diba, you do you. you, do you. Mm-hmm. So, it's just, you're just on working on the assumption, I guess, that having one client will not be enough. So, have, working on that assumption, then um, yeah, it's a good time to test it out. I guess three months is a good period of time naman to, to have enough. And most of the people, I think, minsan naman hindi na sa choice nila to get one. Sometimes life's needs na kailangan mo talaga kumuha. <laughs> so I guess if that's the case, kailangan talaga to ano, um, hone in on your system. And and siguro one more thing about the passion and niching. I think, I'm not sure, per- personally sa akin, how I found my passion, which is that, that now email marketing, no? I didn't grow up wanting to be an email marketer. I didn't even know there's such thing as e- e- email marketer. I didn't know you could write, make a living writing emails. Growing up, gusto ko yung kotse, yung drive. So tiyatlong ako, ano gusto mo paglaki mo? Sabihin ko, taxi driver. Tapos tatawa na nila ako. Ako naman, takong taka, bakit siya kumatawa? <laughs> Tapos, uh-huh. teko, I, I, I drive all day, then I get paid. Hindi ko talaga nag yung concept na yun. So my point is, if you don't know what you're passionate about, I think this one quote by Scott Adams, he is yung nagdodro ng Dilbert na comic books. He's actually mm-hmm. a persuasion expert as well. He said something very profound na tumatak sa akin that success breeds passion more than passion breeds success. Meaning, yun nga, right? if you find success sa ginagawa mo as right, a VA, you eventually grow to love it in a way that nag-enjoy ka na doon. Rather than finding for something na passionate ka, kung wala naman talaga, tas pipilitin mo siya, then you'll be running around in circles, makafrustrate ka lang. So I think if you're confused on funny, finding your niche, sa akin when I found email, I, I did a lot of stuff. Then napansin ko, I like it more, it gets me more sales. And somebody just advised me, just, just parang position yourself as that. <laughs> and I got started to get speaking engagement because mas naro na niche ko even if parang i am fairly competitive in other parts of digital marketing but the fact that you positioned yourself there it gave me more opportunities instead of turned away more so yeah something that to to chew on lang <laughs> i love that. Uh, that that answers the question on how do you find your own niche then and surviving freelancing in itself dahil yun nga yung sometimes it sometimes nakaka overwhelm etong freelancing na ito because you get you need to learn a lot of stuff and then you need to work on a lot of stuff it's not just you know online freelancing is not just sitting your ass in front of the computer and click 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 away and you think you're going to gain a lot of money that's i mean all of you freelancers who already experienced this from day one uh no na you you really need to work and sometimes it sucks the life out of you because of expectations. And as Alan said, you need to look at what you at what you enjoy, really, in life. And if you ang nakaka fulfill sa that is what's pushing you to work harder, work longer, work more if you want to. If you are actually enjoying what you are doing, yun ang 
So I I I like that. May ano um let me jump to I prepared some questions here for the or for our panelists, but let me skip let me skip to uh, w- Melissa. Kasi ano may may mga may nagtadong na dito about uh what where is that comment? Uh, no way could you find that comment about Nish? Uh, he's a an accountant. She's an accountant. Oh yes, wait ano na. Eto. Yeah, there's that. there. Yeah, there you go. So, newbie po ako. Paano ba, ano bang magandang niche to start nasa accounting world po ako? Okay, okay. let's let's forget the the accounting part. Kasi nandito tayo, tayo sa multiple clients and we keep on endorsing na dep- the, depende sa niche mo, you have to narrow down your niche. You have to narrow down your niche. Is there a particular niche, Belisa, that encourages having multiple clients? Well, before you even identify your niche, you have to ask yourself, Mona, who do you want to work with? Ooh, okay, good. Okay, because uh, the people that you can work with versus who you want to work with are two different things. So you have to like really identify kung sino ba yung gusto mong um, katrabaho. Uh, for example, since you are you are in the accounting world, sino gusto mo? Gusto mo bang makipagtrabaho sa isang kagot katulad ko? Gusto mo bang makipagtrabaho sa... So, ito nahirapan akong magtagal. <laughs> Do you want to work with uh, someone in the wellness industry? Do you want someone... Uh, Do you want to serve B2B businesses that operates online? Do you want to serve... So, so that's, that's the, the first step, basically, before you even start niching down pa. Kasi you're, you have accounting eh. Sa accounting kasi you can serve anyone basically, right? But you know, when you start niching down, you have to ask one yourself, who do you want to work with? So aka, you have to identify your dream client. Yun for yun for sa akin, ha? Hindi ako. Hindi ka namin marinig Phoenix. Oh, oh Ayun. wow. Sorry about that. Yeah, I love that answer, Melissa. There are so many ways on finding your your niche, pero most of the times, yung mga, yung mga tips and tricks about finding your niche is focused about you yourself, or I mean, serving the others, uh, what your clients want, puros mga ganun ang mga tips nila. And according to, according to Melissa, it is more on what you want to be. What you want to be, what you want. I think it works in accordance to what Alan also advised. Na titig mo talaga kung saan ka masaya. It is not just about the what what money is is giving you. Kung kung malaking pera yan di jan ka. Because I know a particular uh, long time nakabatch nila ana ata na ganun ang ginawa na parang lilipat siya sa ganito dahil mas malaki ang pera doon and then na parang nakita niya hindi pala pwede sa kanya so lumipat na naman siya sa ibang field dahil without basing it on how she feels how she or he, he feels about it now that is important ladies and gentlemen how do you feel about what you are doing right now kaya nga general VA ang tinuturo namin sa inyo kasi we want you to explore as many fields as possible and then whatever catches your attention most, dun ka mag-focus. That is the reason why we want you, we encourage you to start as a general VA. Do not, um, as much as possible. If you are clueless about what you don't, what you want and don't want, might as well try to be somebody who is a general virtual assistant, which is something that we teach in our VA bootcamp. Yeah, nang, so, so thank you very much for that, Melissa. Etong ano? Um, where's that question for Alan? Until when can you decide exploring handling multiple clients? Um, siguro for me, it's a, a little different in the sense that I have para dual purpose for getting clients. One is, of course, just the servicing them, and also because I, I also teach email marketing in my membership site. And my experience working with clients is something that I can teach as well in my community. So I think that that experience is valuable for my students. So as long as I see that I'm growing with clients and there's more I can teach to them, then I don't necessarily see an end to it unless, of course, it's hampering on like the health or overall business. But sa akin naman, I look at it as a chance to grow as well as on top of yung sa monetary side. So 
I think that's where that's where people have have to be careful when they look at people posting their wins on social media. Because mm. you don't know the backstory, their goals and their purpose. And much more hindi mo nakikita yung mga failures <laughs> usually ng tao to reach that goal. So that's why w- when we um, give you our answers, usually we give it the proper context because wala namang isang tao na alam lahat. We can only share <laughs> what we experience, di ba? So for me, yung answer ko doon might be different from others. But for me, parang as long as it, it's monetarily rewarding and I can grow as a, in my skills, and share that to my students, then second, I don't necessarily put a deadline on when um, I I go for multiple clients. Nice, nice. And um, I, ano na to? Ito ang mahirap sa ano eh. Ito mahirap sa kasama natin, si uh, Mr. Alan no, si Ms. Melissa Profeta, si Mon. At ang kulang tayo sa oras, <laughs> Honestly, because ito, lalo na pag ano, if if you want to talk to to Alan and Melissa and and Mon as well, para you have to massage them a little bit and give them a little more time. Because pag once na bumuelo sila, you better get ready with a recorder because everything that they say is really that precious. And especially ano, pag passionate sila sa ano sa topic, katulad ganito, they are really passionate about about I guess everything in freelancing they are passionate about. So. Yeah, take advantage of it. And I do suggest, ladies and gentlemen, that you attend our Christmas party, our upcoming Christmas party, because these three people will be coming. Noe, could you tell, talk to us about it? Yes. Um, wait a minute, ha. Mag- share your screen lang ako. Yeah, can you see it? Yep. Yes. Ayun. Okay. So, ayun nga, sabi ni Phoenix, I hope you did record this. <laughs> Kung hindi man, uh, balikan nyo sa, sa page namin. May replay kagad and then take notes of what uh, they told us earlier. So, ito yung announcement natin for today. Um, this coming Wednesday, Uh, we will have another Just Success interview, this time with Mr. Elmer Parsaligan, a uh, former OFW who got reunited with his family through freelancing. So that's one of the goals of the VE Bootcamp, no? to bring back our OFWs na tiniis yung pa- paka- pagpapakalayo sa fam- pamilya nila just to earn enough living, enough money to, to you know, support their day-to-day activities, their day-to-day lives, and the, necess- the, the necessities. So, ayun, watch him this December 4, 7 p.m. as he unfolds and tells us his story of how he got reunited with his family. And again, as mentioned ni ano, Phoenix, uh, we will ha- be having our Christmas party This coming Saturday, December 7, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Vikings Venue, MOA. So kasama dyan. Kasama kaming lahat except si Phoenix. Kasi hindi ko alam kung bakit. <laughs> bakit nga ba, Phoenix? <laughs> Binagyo ako. Tinayphone ako. Bakit ba? <laughs> <laughs> ako, I'll be coming from Cagayan de Oro pa eh. So, hindi magagaling na dyan ang typhoon. Ah, talaga? Sige na. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, ayun. Uh, see you guys there. I hope to really meet a lot of new faces there. So, the rate uh, is 1,500. Just um, message our page, VA Bootcamp, if you want in and if you want to join. Next, if you aren't part of the biggest freelancing community in the Philippines yet, please join the Flip PH group. In, on Facebook. And if you haven't um, enrolled in our free VA course yet, you can go to freevacourse.com. It's a five-day free course for people who want to, uh, to join the freelancing industry. And for the Pinay Work at Home Moms, we also have a separate group for you guys where you can mingle with the same um, moms 
who are working at home with while uh, taking care of their baby. So just go to the Pinay Work at Home Moms group, Facebook group, and join. Ayun lang, ayun lang for me. Uh, I think we have um, advertisements from our Lodis. So Phoenix. Yeah. Um. Ano na to? I ask. Uh. I ask the panel. Kung meron silang. Kung meron silang ipa plug. And uh, dear, dear viewers, I would love you to reach out and extend your communication to these three, most especially lalo na sila Melissa, Alan, and one. Their time is very, very expensive. Mas bahal pang oras nila kaysa sa akin. Kaya please lang. If you really want to reach out, go ahead and listen to their advertisement and see what they can offer. Let's start with Melissa. Can so I recently launched uh, my book. It's called Explode Your Influence: How to Turn Your Personal Brand into Wealth. Um, the initial release of a hundred copies has been sold out, so we're just waiting for the next batch of release this November, December. Um, but this is best for people who are going to start to build their personal brand, and if they want to have direction, uh, you know, have confidence, and start eliminating all the personal branding guesswork, then this book is for you. It also comes with a free mini masterclass that is, you know, kasama siya ng book for, for Christmas season lang. And then it goes away after 30 days. So yeah, you can uh, reach out to me if you want to order. Just message me on Facebook. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much for for joining us today, Melissa. I know that you've got plenty more to share, but well, I'm limited by so orders. <laughs> but I hope to see you next time and let's uh let's have fun talking about stuff again, right, Melissa? Sure. I'd love okay. to. Okay, no. Thank you very much. How about you, Alan? Yeah, first is the pinko congrats, Kim Melissa, for selling out the first hundred. And I encourage you to get her book. She's Thank the you. total package, legit. So yeah, um, take advantage of that. So on my end, just a quick quick story now. So I have this webinar because with um, I share with my audience, and I got like surprisingly, it's the first time I got an eight minute eight minute video giving me a feedback on that webinar, and it was a little sad that she since we are talking with your audience, no, she was a general VA. She has three kids, then she she's doing va work then she's the she does the financial planning yung she sells insurance she feels like nabanggit niya na she feels like she's a jack, jack of all trades but she still feels like she said she told me i am nothing sabi niya gan. and it was a bit heart-wrenching in sinabi niya yun. and the, the reason that she emailed me that video was the fact that in that webinar i mentioned something that and to the effect that well, pag gusto mo kumita online, walang mahirap, walang madali, right? Kanya-kanyang hirap. Pero sa isa lang, mabubuhay ka. Kaya mo buhay sa isa lang. And that webinar is about like how to sell info products. Like basically what I do, how I discover that. And if you, you're interested in, that, that's just a free webinar. If you're interested to see that, to understand why she felt that and how that empowered her. Um, I think I, I gave the link to Noe and Phoenix. You can check that out in the mm -hmm. chat if you're interested. And yeah, I wish you all the best. And thanks for having me here. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan, for be, for joining us today. I know that, I know, siguro parang naka-shotgun ka na, lang si Ana sa'yo, kaya ka na po na pilitan mo sumahan sa amin kayo. But yeah, I'm so glad that you are here. I love that Um, I love that you are here because, you know, a lot of people would are excited to see you even on Christmas party at saka etong episode na ito ngayon. That's like, Mon, Mon, ikaw, what can you say about our two lodis na nakasama natin ngayon? Well, first of all, um, like nung nabanggit ni Miss Anna na I'll be I'll be showing up along these two amazing people. Parang just I just held myself back. Tapos parang parang I lost my breath for a second. <laughs> na I'm hardy I'm hardy with these guys, so it feels surreal. Cause Mm -hmm. I'm just like kind of starting out 
So yeah, I even like bought one of Alan Alan Ngo's you know, course. And then there was one time when he called me nandito lang ako sa bahay tapos like he told me like uh his customers aren't just like numbers on paper they are actual people parang like sobrang natouch ako and it's like kind of a mind blowing thing to say na ano na there's actually some people who think like this tapos parang it just It's just very heartwarming and it makes me want to like do more and give back more to the other people and actually this is also the first time that I've met Miss Melissa so mm-hmm. wala wala pa akong ano but like getting introduced to her now I see that she's really an amazing person and I think I might also buy her book <laughs> <laughs> so yeah Uh, I just want to like also give something away. So I want you guys to go and watch my just success because my giveaway there is actually something that helps people out get more clients. So it's kind of something na ano na kind of relative to this uh, to this topic. So yeah, please check it out, guys, and thank you for having me. Wow, thank you for being with us as well, Bon. At buti na lang ano eh, buti na lang napilitan ka rin ni Ana na sumali ngayon eh kasi. <laughs> no, you should not be intimidated by these two powerhouses regardless, pero they they are indeed powerhouses. Katakot-takot silang dalawa. But you should not be intimidated by them. Instead, just join them and mingle with them because they are still part of our family, freelancing family. And I will really, really love that uh Melissa is here despite na, you know, she's a new mom. Congratulations. And And you have time. Eh, eh, ang pinakamaganda kasi dito sa sa freelance, dito sa pamilya natin, dito sa Flipmos especially, is we got these awesome people who have their own experiences who are willing to share. So with that in mind, sabi ko nga, mahal ang oras nila. So I hope, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that you appreciate their time and the things that they they shared with you. So go go ahead and extend, uh, reach out to them and say hi, hello, thank you, whatever you want to say. But uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. But again, do not expect them to answer you immediately because their time is really, really, really expensive. I cannot say that enough. And in time, if you follow their path, if you follow their advice, your time will be expensive as well. Yeah, just be diligent. Just kayong mga, especially ito mga first timers, ito mga newbies, ito mga hindi pa nakakuha ng mga clients. Just keep moving on, keep keep purging on, keep trudging on. Kasi ano, uh, lahat kami, lahat ito mga nandito. We started the way you do, you are doing right now, and look at they are kung anong position ni Melissa ngayon, anong position ni Alan, anong position ni Mon, anong position ni Noe, we are all living our comfortable lives now because of freelancing. And there is a re- there's a reason why. And these reasons we give you para uh, things will be easier for you. Hindi masyadong rocky road. Okay? So I hope that you enjoyed our episode today. Is there anything you want to add, Noe? Ah, uh, wala na. Mm-mm. <laughs> <Other> <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. So again, thank you very much, Melissa, Alan, and Juan. And uh, it's nice to see you on December 7. Guys, habul kayo. Habul kayo. Kasi it's still open. Kung gusto nyo sumali, habul kayo. But then again, I will see you next week. Bye-bye. There you go. <laughs>